Welcome to another episode of the Kumble Corner, a cricket podcast all about Indian cricket. And uh, by the way, remember to subscribe on our YouTube channel and on your podcast app. And also go on to X and Insta and Facebook and find us. Search Kumble Corner, both with K's, of course. Uh, I am Super Joshi, joined today by Nakul Pandey and also Karan Mehta. All of us are just slightly west of Ghaziabad. Um, and yeah, let's talk cricket. Should we get straight into it with uh, a bit of the Dalip Trophy, um, Nakul? Yeah, so the Dalip Trophy, uh, if you're uh, not so hot on uh, Indian first class cricket this is uh, a four team uh, domestic tournament India A, B, C and D uh, basically a sort of uh, Ranji Trophy super uh, super team so we're into the into the second round uh, India A thumped India D uh, by 186 runs in Anantapur Shams Polani had an excellent game uh, you might know him from uh, from IPL uh, squads Mumbai Indians uh, 27 year old slow left arm uh, all around it so he uh, he made 89 in pretty uh, tricky conditions when uh, in in the first innings for uh, India A came in with his team in considerable uh, trouble after the likes of Mayank Agarwal and Tilak Verma uh, had uh, uh, had got out uh, they made 290 in the first innings and then uh, uh, Khalil Ahmed got some got some wickets as uh, they skittled a a pretty strong India D batting lineup that had Shayas Ayer, Dev that particle who actually did make ninety, uh, and Sanju Sampson in the middle order. Uh, then uh, Pratham Singh Tilak Verma made a hundred in the in the second innings as uh, the as India A set a target of four hundred and eighty eight runs, which uh, India D got nowhere near despite a hundred from uh, Ricky Bui. Uh, three wickets for Shams Mulani uh, in the uh, in the fourth inning so a good match all round uh, for him uh, much more high uh, much closer game in uh, uh, between India C and India B that game was uh, drawn India C batted first and put on fight made 525 a hum- uh, comeback 100 in first class cricket for Ishan Kishan remember he missed some Ranji Trophy games uh, towards the end of last year after being or uh, earlier this year in fact wasn't it after being left out of the England test squad Baba Indrajit uh, also uh, made Ranjith Raj Gaikwad who's captaining made uh, 58 uh, Mukesh Kumar uh, who uh, made his uh, test debut I think during that Indian series also got uh, four because that's Rahul Chahar who doesn't play a huge amount of first class cricket uh, Abhumanyu Ishwaran who has been on the fringes of Indian uh squads before made 157 not out in the second innings oh sorry in india b's reply jagdish and also made 70 but then it really things really fell away badly uh from 129 for none uh, india b were bowled up for 332 eight wickets for anshul kamboj uh for uh from uh from haryana uh seema uh former india under 19 uh and then the match kind of petered out to a draw uh, but uh, some uh, uh, Kamboj and uh, Ishwaran and, and a few others, Ishan Kishan, are also making a comeback. So uh, some good runs uh, for some of the uh, some of the batters on the fringes of Indian selection, and also uh, uh, um, uh, and also Khalil Ahmed as as well. But none of those guys are are really in. Uh, in immediate danger of breaking into the t- into the test team, but it's it's good to see the likes of uh, Rutharaj and uh, Ishwar and, and Ishan Kishan in the runs early in the first class season. Uh, so that's uh, how those two games uh, ended: a big win for India A and a draw between India C and B. Cool. Uh, a few few more games uh, to go there, and it's, it's, I suppose it's it's handy that even if those guys aren't necessarily in danger of breaking into the squad, it still just lets the people, the incumbents who are in the squad, let them know that. You know, there are people out there who are, are, are making a push for things just to keep them on their toes a little bit. Uh, right, guys, shall we uh, head over to the main event? Um, Bangladesh are in India. Um, and it's probably the best Bangladesh test team or test squad in a, in a long time. They're obviously on a high, having just beaten their former colonial masters, um, Pakistan. Um, and they're always going to be spiky. They're... <laughs> Bangladesh or Bangladesh. Um, so, <laughs> Karan, do you want to talk about their squad? Um, how they've got genuine pace, actually, um, and and the threat that they could pose 
going into well definitely the first test in Chennai but the series as a whole definitely yeah this is one of the more excited and nervously anxious I've been for a Bangladesh um, series and I just actually just I guess a Bangladesh match in general because we're sort of used to patting them on the head and treating them like our little brother and it's a cute little competition and I admire them for always coming out but this time there is a hint of concern um, not only because uh, India hasn't been playing great against the spin but as you mentioned their pace and the what's his name Nahid Rana that guy is an electric factory to watch and uh, his pace his consistency at like 145 touching 150 a couple times in the roads of Pakistan um, and we've just seen him be pretty lively throughout his relatively short career. I think he's only been playing cricket for like a handful of years. Um, so players like that are sort of wild cards, I think, in this situation. There's going to be a lot of pressure. There's going to be a lot of intensity. But if they can keep the mental composure to sort of withstand everything that comes with this uh, test series against India in India, which is arguably the hardest play to, place to play any team in any sport, um, they have the skill set to do it. So I think with their pace stack and with their relatively consistent batting, um, we do have – it's not a match – it's not a series that we can take lightly. And and if we do come out and dominate, then I think it'll also speak volumes about Pakistan. So I think this will be a good gauge on how good Bangladesh really is or is Pakistan just minnows that are on the same playing field with the USA. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the USA and Pakistan have a bit of a connection anyway, so but we won't delve into politics on this podcast. Um, no, no, cool. Your thoughts? Yeah, uh, Bangladesh being keeping us all entertained by getting quite close to sacking Chandigarh Singh uh, after he masterminded a remarkable Test Series win. In, Do you remember uh, last, last time I called them Spurs? And it reminds me now of Mourinho getting sacked just before their, their cup final. Sorry, carry on. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I think there the similarity between Nazmul Hassan Papon and Daniel Levy ends. But uh, <laughs> but, uh, but but despite all of this, he seems to have um, really have this team playing uh, hard but calm cricket. They really seem to know what they're doing. Um, they've got a hugely experienced core as well. I think Mushfiqur Rahim, uh, Shakib Al Hassan. Uh, Lytton Das is, uh, is one of my favourite players in world cricket. Uh, it always seems to come good. Uh, and uh, Najmul and, and Shadman at the top of the order, uh, they are going to provide a challenge. And then and then those those three fast bowlers, uh, neither Anna Hassan Mahmood uh, and and led by Tatkin Ahmed, uh, who is absolutely terrific, uh, and Mehdi Hassan Miraz as well, who is a, a mm. genuinely excellent spin bowling all rounder. Uh, I'm I'm interested to see how they go. And uh, the talk of it is that Chennai has relayed its pitches recently and and brought in. I'm never entirely sure what to make of the red soil versus black soil debate. And I think a lot of things that are talked about about pitch preparation and about um, there's a lot of there's a lot of amateur geologists out there. There's a lot of amateur amateur horticulturalists out there who um, seem to have very de- well developed theories that don't necessarily seem to stand up to reality uh, when when it comes to pitches. But it does seem like this this Chennai pitch, as say early in the in the season, may have a bit of bounce to it. So we we could well see, uh, which I think is good and uh, should make for a, for a really interesting test match all round. Uh, and I'm excited to see how the how Pakistan's fast bowlers uh, go if they can do what the Indian fast bowlers have been doing in India over the last few years. Both bowl. Bull, target the stumps. Uh, don't try and rely on nicks off the uh, on nicks of the slip cordon. It's very much bolds and lbws, uh, and and not allowing uh, the batters to to free their arms too much. Uh, we could be in for a for a really interesting uh, series. And, and yeah, this is Bangladesh have only ever played three Test matches in India, uh, which is uh, bizarre, really, when you consider that. Uh, uh, when you consider that Bangladesh started their uh, international uh, or their test career against against India, when you consider that uh, they have been uh, a growing force in in test cricket for a little bit, for a little while, they do uh, win games away from home. I mean, India lost a test match in Bangladesh the, lo- the last time they uh, they toured. 
Uh, this this could be the start of, of Bangladesh becoming a more regular feature on, on the Indian calendar, particularly as they're now what, fourth in the World Test Championship. Yeah, and they, uh, they, do, they don't generally get invited to many places to, to, to play test matches in the sense that I mean, Australia have not had them in years. Uh, no, no, Bung, in, Bung, in Australia keep finding uh, ever more creative excuses not to play... Uh, not to play Bangladesh. Uh, they haven't been in England for a little while either. Yeah. Um, and it'll basically take the World Test Championship, kind of forcing that to happen. Um, for 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 that to happen. But I I think this is this is a really exciting way for India to kick off their their first class season. A, a bonkers first class season, by the way. India play ten Test matches in fifteen weeks. Uh, yeah, including it, it, uh, yeah, including this series, the New Zealand series, and the Australia series. Um, and twenty twenties in between. Yeah, with an entirely different squad, presumably. But uh, sure, with the coaching staff and everything, there's still a, a burden, I would say. Yeah, yeah, and it, it is. Uh, I don't know if this is because I work in a sort of behind the scenes media role, but I. <laughs> nobody ever says this, but pray for the analysts. You're not going to get any time to prepare uh, players uh, for for during this. You're going to be working overtime. I pity the the medical staff. Um, who are going to be working overtime on on a group of fast bowlers in particular, uh, and also some of the uh, some of the guys who've been around for a really long time. Like uh, we know, Ashwin has uh, has back issues. Uh, mm-hmm. We know that uh, Rishabh Pant is only just coming back from a long term injury. You know, it feels like a while, but it, it's not that it's long that he's years, been back right? in uh, that he's been back in cricket. Uh, certainly yeah. in first class, yeah, yeah. I mean, his to... first test match, like uh, so... absolutely, and that's a that's uh, a that's a return that's been coming for a long time. If you think of of what he went through, hmm. and to come back and then play after two years, that that's still not that long a time frame, really. He, he nearly died. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. He got he got really quite close to dying and had to learn how to walk again, let alone how to play cricket again. And and now, uh, six hundred twenty nine days, I think it'll be between. Yeah his accident and the start of the first test match. Um, and he, he he looks exactly the same free-spirited, domineering, positive player uh, who he who he was uh, before that before that injury. It's pretty... It won't be talked about as much because he's made it look so relatively easy, but uh, and because he's relatively young and but it is it is pretty remarkable uh, what he's what he's been able to Achieve, you know, he's not back because of sentiment. He's back because he's still India's best keeper batter, by mm. and one of the best in the world by some distance. Um, yeah. The more I have looked into this series, the more excited I am for for it to start and to uh, and to see these narratives unfold. Fair enough. Yeah, I mean, look, I echo what you you said about the. Uh... The, the the sheer number of fixtures I couldn't believe I thought am I misreading this what's going on I don't ever remember that many test matches altogether but hey um, as someone who loves test matches I think it's a great thing um, you guys have both touched on uh, we've touched on the pace side of things but particularly Shakib Al Hassan and Mehdi Hassan Miraz the spinners spinning all rounders um, we essentially India have got spinning all rounders and the last time Bangladesh be India in 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 Bangladesh, I think spin was was a a major factor, right? Um, what are your thoughts on what these guys can do to India? Um, and I suppose that's perhaps a case for not preparing such a a mental spinning pitch. Um, it's what India could do against these spinners. I'm more worried about what India's going to do for the, like against themselves because the. The stark drop off in India's batting against spin, particularly at home over the last four years, has been um, sizable to the point where it's not negligent by any stretch. And I was reading a couple of those pitch reports, um, and that seemed slightly targeted when Nakul said uh, amateur horticulturalist, which, after reading pretty much everything you possibly can about the difference of Mumbai red soil versus the black soil in Chennai, um, I guess I'm slightly more than an amateur at this point. But the most interesting that I, thing that I saw was that they have seven pitches out there in Chennai, basically split three and four between which ones are the red soils so the bouncy ones and which ones are the black soil spinny ones. India, for the first couple of days, practiced on both, but most recently has exclusively practiced on the red soil pitches, while Bangladesh has been subjected to only exclusively practice on the black soil spin 
driven pitches. So if I know the BCCI and Jay Shaw like I do, uh, we have, I have absolutely no doubt we're going to be playing a strictly red soil pitch. Um, and I was looking back at it in 2021 when we played against England in in Chennai, back-to-back first and second test matches. The first test match was that red soils uh, pace-driven high-bounce pitch. England won. Fifth day, they scored 578. On the first day, Root scored a double. Second test match, obviously Jay Shaw got his soldiers into order, made a spin-driven pitch. Ushering scored a century, got a fifer. India basically walked away with that match. Uh, out of the England, crossed 200 in either of their innings. So that, I think, is actually going to be relatively important, um, in which I think India might actually play three pace bowlers. But looking at the numbers... Yeah. From 2016 to 2020, India's average against spin, and shout out to Rathankar, because he's normally our stats guy. Um, we averaged 63.36, average balls between dismissals of 103. Since 2021, our top seven, uh, bad as I'm excuse this is our top seven, went from averaging 63.36 to now 37.56 against spin. Uh, so obviously, they haven't played Bangladesh a whole bunch then, but it's still concerning yeah we're playing Bangladesh right now but I think if we're playing Sri Lanka Australia anyone really who's got a formidable one two spin attack I don't have the same confidence that I used to do uh in India's playability against them so if Vera finds form then we're great we're fine uh but if he does it in our top seven are still a little bit all over the place um it could be a little bit dicier than what we thought and it'll be exciting to see how Gautam implements are we going to be a little bit more England-esque and try to take on the spin, or are we going to let the spin come to us and be play it more like Dravid would? Um, so they've got the quality spin. I'd like to say I back our batters, but our numbers don't necessarily lean in our direction. So now it's just going to be an exciting series to know tactics, intent, and just see if we've got the poise to play against this spin attack. Yeah, a couple of things on, on that. I've had my rant about India preparing spin-friendly wickets and how it actually doesn't help them very much. Um, this is this is quite a different uh, top seven to some of the t- those top sevens that have uh, India put out over the last few years. The you know, if you look at the if you go through the the top seven, Rohit Sharma, brilliant player of spin, Yashasvi Jaiswal, uh, better player of pace, but from what we've seen, uh, can also take on the spinners. Virat Kohli, we know how good he is against spin. Safraz Khan. Very, very good player of spin, and Rishabh Pant will always will never take a backward step against uh, against spin bowlers either. Uh, and you've got a good mix of right handers and left handers in that in that top seven, which India haven't had previously. And and also those those pitches were from extremely spin friendly to basically unplayable uh, between uh, that second test in Chennai, which was a pretty decent wicket, a kind of regular. Spinning wicket. I wrote Sharma got that incredible double hundred uh, uh, early on in that early on in that match, um, but the the averages of the opposition teams were even lower than India's were uh, uh, against the spinners during those times. So it's not as though it's not as though it was a uniquely India thing. It was very much that the pitches made spin bowling considerably easier, uh, and so it. It necessitated then India being hyper aggressive against spinners uh, in a way that they don't always pref- like doing uh, in order to score some runs. Um, I would be surprised from what we have read if that is going to be the case. Uh, here. It's also India haven't don't play that many Test matches in in September. This is a these aren't these pitches aren't as worn and used as they usually would be by the time a touring team comes to to india we're also it also won't quite be as hot uh although chennai we're still from the weather reports that we've seen today we'll still be in the mid 30s high f- uh celsius uh high uh, fe- uh sort of feels like real feel uh touching uh 41 degrees celsius uh for uh for day one that's 106 fahrenheit uh plus plus significant humidity and uh, as early thunker was saying in our in our group chat and 
potentially even even some rain. So we, it is going to be uh, bakingly hot. That actually might lend itself to playing three uh, three fast bowlers just to just to give them a bit of a rest. If you are if it is going to be a pitch that has a little bit of uh, bounce, I would still on the balance of probability think India would play three uh, three spinners and play Jadeja, Ashwin, and and Kuldeep. Uh, but I would not be all that surprised if, say, Yashadale uh, gets a uh, uh, gets a game. Partly is there a case... because sorry, sorry, part, yeah, p- partly um, because of the because of the pitch, uh, partly because of the left arm angle, and partly um, because you might need some miles in these guys' legs uh, ahead of this uh, astonishingly congested schedule. Yeah, and that's the, that's the key point, right? This is as much as it is um, a test series and a proper test series, and there are points at stake. It's also to get they uh, have a, a reasonable competition. I mean, this sounds disrespectful to Bangladesh, but to have a reasonable level of competition and get the people, like you said, miles in their legs, get them warmed up, get them focused, and get them going essentially for sterner tests ahead. It's, yeah, you know, I mean, it's a World Test Championship series, so it is. It is. Um... Is mandatory in, 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 but in terms of the mindset that India are going into this with, there is unfortunately going to have to be a balance struck between the needs of the now and the needs of the future, just because of the schedule. <coughs> yeah, and I think um, that that lends an argument. Like I was, um, I used to be happy happy watching Test openers bowling a bit of off spin, a bit a few leg breaks. We don't really see that anymore, um, and I think there's probably a case for Rohit and, and uh, Jaiswal to you know. Turn their arm over as well, because um, then essentially you've got what five spinners, um, three pace bowlers. I think that's a that's a good. <laughs> that's, that's a good. You know, I, it's I, 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 I love the scenario when Ashwin and Jadeja aren't doing it. Turn to your Shasvi Jaiswal. <laughs> yeah, or if there's heat, just give them a break. You know, if they want to go off for a limbu bunny or whatever, they can they can do it. Um, especially if if you know Ashwin wants to go and get some some tiger balm or whatever on his back. Um, Let's just talk about Ashwin while we've just, I guess, mentioned him. It uh, at the time of recording, it's his, it's his happy birthday. So um, happy birthday to uh, Ravijan Ashwin, uh, ethical learner, as a lot of people call him, the um, the thinker and the, the son of of of, uh, of Chebuk, basically. Um, by the time this podcast goes out, um, yeah, it may not be his birthday anymore. But but there we are. Do you want to just talk? Ridankar was mentioning this. This um, is, is pretty much his last Test match at Chebuk. Um Thoughts on that? Thoughts on him? I love him. <laughs> Who does? I love about him. He's an instigator. He's provocative. He's cerebral. He. I've seen him bat three in the IPL, bat eleven for India. He's a different level of. I think he's always two steps ahead of. How I think the match is going to go. Where you always think that he might be just bowling just sort of know-nothing deliveries and the next one will just rip in and tear your soul out. Uh, and having players like that is is such a joy to watch because it it's just a bit of brilliance where you know it's beyond just physical skill set and ability to spin the ball, but it's a really thought out, um, more so than I would say over, it's like a very meticulously um, procedural spell where he knows what he's going to do in the first over of spell and how he plans to use that to build it up in the seventh over of spell. Um, and I think there's something about him that is, it's alluring in the sense that he rubs a lot of people the wrong way, but it's not in a veer up sort of fashion where it's not like in your face and arrogance and fiery and passionate. It's just more subtle and quiet and directed and intentional. Um, so yeah, Ashwin, Ashwin is one of my tailor made favorite players to watch on and off the field. And I think he'll probably be a potential uh, future coach, if not for India, than someone who's fortunate enough to have him. Yeah, he's. Um, I, I'm often. Uh, I lament the fact that I don't speak Tamil because I, I miss out on his YouTube channel. Um, but you know, he, you mentioned Virat uh, and and Ashwin. They probably fulfil their their kind of regional stereotypes of, of Virat being a Delhi boy, kind of brash, and um, Ashwin being, uh, a, a, you know, a Tamil. He's, shall we say, cerebral. Intelligent, but no less. Uh, still not not a wallflower, but by any, they kind of know what they want and and, and how to put that across. Um, Knuckle, you've um, have you have you met Ravijendra Ashwin on his tours over here? 
No, I haven't, sadly. Um, I I would love to spend any number of hours you will give me just chatting <laughs> cricket with our Ashwin. Um, he just... What I love about Ashwin is that a lot of players who are very analytical get trapped in that analysis and can't... I find it very difficult to move beyond that that point. I think the fact that Ashwin is able to to break down his game so well and still execute it at a high level is pretty remarkable. That shows a, a real genuine mastery of of his art and, and of the game. He's able to cons- to plan a spell, to plan a mode of attack for a particular series, for a particular batter, to train himself to do it, to go out and execute it, and then to talk about it afterwards in a way that I don't think we've seen really since Warn. I, it, it's and it's really quite astonishing to watch it happen almost in almost in real time. And, and I like the fact that he is able to keep things simple when he needs to. Sometimes it is just a case of trying to give it a rip every single ball, land it on the same spots, it's slightly different variations in flight and 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 pace sometimes he'll have to go to uh to the slider so it's like more undercutting delivery sometimes he'll have to change up going over and around the wicket sometimes he'll have to uh bowl with a slightly higher or lower arm uh sometimes he'll create the impression that something is happening with a field change and he'll uh, he's uh, watching him Watching it sort of click when he's worked out what he's going to do uh, is... It, it, I find it endlessly fascinating. I find I find him for... Cricket Hall of Fame doesn't mean as much as it does in some sports, but he is a Hall of Famer. And he's going to be regarded as a Hall of Famer, even if he isn't already. It's bizarre, in a way, that he is underrated uh as a just as a pure spinner mm. and i don't know if that's because he's an all-rounder and i don't know if that's because he went through a period of being out of the side and he's now not necessarily going to play that you know we saw him get left out of the england series for example wow um, yeah and, you know it worked and you know, well, yeah. is, and, and, <laughs> and look you could see the logic behind it even if you know i was one of those people every single test match saying play ashwin um he, you know even if you just played Jadeja, Jadeja as a batter, just play Ashwin as your as your one spinner. Yeah. Um, but these stats are a few years out of date now, but I I did some analysis a few years ago on comparing Ashwin. The other thing that gets talked about, and it's a similar conversation that you have with someone like Anderson, is that, you know, they the, the conditions, they get written off because of the conditions, because they bowl in helpful conditions. So these stats are a few years old now, but Ashwin against other spinners in the test matches that they've played against in in Asia. So this is India, uh, in India, uh, Bangladesh, and Sri Lanka. Uh, he, depending on what metric you use, the average economy strike rate, he is between twenty and nearly fifty and forty something percent better in terms of his performance than the, his opposition spinners in the same test matches that he has played in Asia. Uh, this is not someone who performs at about what you would expect in helpful conditions. This is a guy who is can really hold his own in conditions that aren't helping him because he's got all of those skills and he's got that ability to fulfill the role that uh, is necessary in the team. He's obviously brilliant against left-handers. But you give him any advantage and he's lethal. Uh, and he's just got more and more so over the last few years. He hoovers up five wicket hauls at an absolutely absurd rate. You know, take up he, Murali. Take up Murali, who is a who is a statistical freak and an outlier on so many levels. So I don't think anyone will ever get close to being as dominant in a single bowling attack as Murali was or had to be. But no, Ashwin could well end up uh, if he plays if he plays long enough, second on the list of of Test fifers. This is in a really good attack for the last portion of his career. Um, and if he, if he was know, in a worse attack, he probably would have more fifers because other people. Yeah, absolutely. Wickets, he'd yeah. have to bowl so many overs. He'd have to yeah. bowl so many more overs. He'd have to, um, you know, Kumble corner. He'd have to be like an Kumble was, kind of carrying the sides bowling mm-hmm. uh, at times if he didn't have Judeja, Kuldeep, and the fast bowlers. 
and then throw in the fact that he's a more than handy number eight, occasionally number seven batter as well. Um, it's India have been really, really lucky to have Ashwin for as long as they have had, and that he has continued to be so hungry and so good for so long. And it, I I really cannot speak highly enough of him. He's he's in an all time India Test eleven for me, no question. Well, I mean that's 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 high praise. <laughs> that really is high praise. Um, Curran touched on he Curran said you, that the people don't necessarily like him. Um, I I don't know who these people are apart from Josh Butler, but um, I I would I would counter that by saying, well, I mean, look, yeah, there will be people that don't like him. But I always found it um, quite heartwarming. If, if you remember when Ajaz Patel got um, mm. the tenfer in Mumbai, and if you saw the interaction afterwards, where Ashwin essentially interviewed him, get, I think they gave him a trophy or signed church or something. That whole interaction was so wholesome, especially from someone like Ashwin, who would have loved to got a tenfer. Let, let's be honest. Not one did he make a joke about uh, you know you, you lucky so and so or should have been mine or whatever. It was just just completely congr- congratulatory. Um, and it was just a great moment. I, for me, that was a, a highlight of the, or a, of the man himself as, as just a, a good bloke. But he's also the, non, the non-striking the non run-out man, machine. Like, <laughs> yeah, that, and yeah. I love that about him too. Is me that too. He's, he's my king. I love that shit. I, 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 but stay in your I, crease. Yeah, that that, that will be it's, this, it's the easiest. This is a completely different discussion. Let's not get sidetracked onto this. Well, I, I, Nicole, I don't know if you know this story. I think, um, but I told. I remember telling the other guys. I was in a game. Uh, I I torn the webbing of my my just between my thumb and, and forefinger uh, um, in nets just before the season started, and I was coming back, and it was still a bit sore, and I and I played because team were a bit short, and I defended it, and I was standing outside my crease. The, the wicketkeeper was way back. And I was just distracted by that hurt. And the wicketkeeper, I've just turned around to see the wicketkeeper crawling up and uh, whipping off the bells. And I was out. And you know what? You're obviously in that moment, you think, oh, you cheeky guys. But really, it was my fault. I should have just stayed, just stepped slightly back. And and, and that's ultimately what it is. Like, it's stay in your crease. Yeah, it, it's the it's the only mode of dismissal that's completely within the batter's control. Yeah. Um uh, I also love that he basically had because because he is this uh, guy who just spots these tiny margins and this guy who watches cricket so intensely. You know, he'd spotted that Josh Butler would, has is prone to doing this every now and again. So it wasn't yeah. just it wasn't completely spur of the moment. But that, yeah, I I think that I I, I enjoy his. He doesn't have to be upfront about it. He doesn't have to be macho about it but he knows when he's right and he knows uh he knows what he's about and i i i don't know much about him as a you know beyond we we it, it's very difficult to you know we don't see we see a fairly manicured image of of these guys yeah yeah but I mean, he he seems like he seems like he'd be great company <laughs> yeah no that that he does that he does, um, and perhaps worth learning Tamil for, just to be able to understand his his videos. Um, uh, he, puts we... out mo- he puts out more stuff on YouTube than professional YouTubers. It's crazy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's got, I guess he's in got multiple language, in multiple languages. Yeah, yeah. I mean that that alone is is quite quite mad um, in itself. Shall we um, flip over to the other the other bowlers? Um, and I'm going to be a massive hypocrite right now. Um, last week, I was giving out to Mohammed Siraj about um, not engaging in any kind of antics. But actually, in hindsight, it's Bangladesh. Give him chin music. Give him, give him it all. Like, just, just go for it. Warm yourself up, lad. You know, eat your heart out. Fill your boots. That's what I would say. Because uh, Mohammed Shami is still not. Uh, he's, he's obviously not available for this um, series. So really, you've got between Jesse and, and Siraj, they've got to, but like carry the, the fast bowling burden really. Um, and I guess. One of the others, um, either Yash Dial or Akash Deep, will, will maybe fill in that that third spot. Um, w- you mentioned earlier on that, that there's talk of three uh, fast bowlers in this uh, knuckle. Um, what are we thinking, guys? Uh, Karen, what are you thinking? Two fast bowlers, three fast bowlers, or 
like I was saying, just go with t- ten fast bowlers and a wicket keeper, or ten bowlers and a wicket keeper, and just like because some of them are all rounders anyway. I I want to do three uh, uh, pace attack. Okay. I think it's exciting. It'll be. I think the last time that we played three paces in a home test was also against Bangladesh, probably mm-hmm. like 2018, 2019 or something like that. Um, so yeah, I think it's like um, the three spinners is our bread and butter. It's we know what we're going to get. We know who they are. We know what they're capable of. I think the first test is sort of throw shit against the wall and see what sticks. Uh, yeah. You have to make yeah. that decision, and I think. I like Yash style. I like the left-handed aspect of it. Um, young, fun. So, yeah, that's probably who I would throw in there. And I'm, and I'm not going to advocate and say that's going to be the best 11. But I think for a series like this, and as we mentioned, with so much going on, um, the players that we've seen for years and years and years, we know what they're capable of, whether in a slump or not. We know what they have in them. So I think right now, and if we take a series, like a 3-0 lead, hopefully, um, we just – Start experimenting. There's a lot, a lot of players. This whole Dooley Trophy, I know it's, it just reiterates the depth that India cricket has, and I, the only way to really understand that depth is by playing the depth in the big, in the big time under the lights matches. So that's just the way that I would go about it. Not necessarily because it's the best starting eleven, but I think for the long run and figuring out what we have with these young guns, that's the way that I would do it. I don't think it's a better situation. So uh, with a view with a view to it being the first game in a long season, I guess is is what mm-hmm. you're saying, and and obviously we don't know much about uh, Yeshan Akashdeep. I mean we've seen them, but we don't know that much. Um, is is that this, I guess is is the summary of what you're saying, right? Yeah, basically. Um, and I think out of the five pitches that he's going to play, there's not there's not going to be a better opportunity to play three pace attack than right. Yeah. Now. And also, I mean, I guess that would maybe expose a bit of Bangladesh's weakness. Um, they're not known for being able to handle a bit of pace and bounce. Uh, Nuckle, would you go along with, with what we've just said or you, you have a different theory? Uh, last, so last week I was uh, thinking three spinners. I I am going to change that. Though, having read now that Chen Lai has finally settled on the pitch they've settled in and kind of looking... Looking in more depth at the schedule, so I I, I would like to see Yashdale, uh given his uh, uh, given a game, uh, given his uh, given his test debut, mm-hmm. uh, which probably means unfortunately Kuldeep Yadav is going to have to sit out, which is you're going to have to get used to leaving out good players, unfortunately, um, as as this new selection group uh, and this this new management group uh, takes over. So that if if <coughs> India haven't had. I'm I'm always a little bit wary of picking a guy based on what arm he bowls with, and I think that I am into matchups are important, but uh, I think they they can't be the only uh, they can't be the the only thing, uh, and the they can't be they can't be too dominant in selection criteria. Mm-hmm. But if Yashdale is good enough to be one of India's four or five best fast bowlers, um, then. The fact that he's a left armor is a massive bonus, uh, and I would like to see uh, how how we go with uh, Bumrah Siraj uh, and and Yashdail and Ashwin and Jadeja because I think in all things being equal, India's best attack is Bumrah, Shami, Siraj, Jadeja, and Ashwin, mm-hmm. and I don't mind replicating that uh, for for the for this test match. Uh, one thing I would say is that, given how, given how much cricket India have to play over the next uh, what two and a half months, uh, or nearly three months, given the variety of pitches that India will be will be playing on, just even within India, so mm-hmm. so India have Test matches now uh, in. Uh, so it's Chennai and Kanpur for this Bangladesh series, and then. For the New Zealand series, which starts mid October, it's uh, Bangalore, Pune, and Mumbai. Those are all very different conditions. Those are all going to require very different tasks. Oh, those are all rather going to require very different skill sets. And don't be alarmed or surprised if the bowling attack changes between those games for both fitness and conditions reasons. And mm-hmm. I think. It's important that we don't read necessarily too much into any individual selection and try and cast forward to that meaning that 
so and so is now out of favor. So and so is now in favor. This is the best attack. This is going to be the best. This is going to be what. <laughs> and not trying to forecast what India the selection the eleven that India will put out in that first test match in Perth uh, ahead of time. And I. So I am leaning probably 60-40 in favour of picking three uh, three fast bowlers. Okay. Well, look, it is a squad game um, now, uh, just, just with the volume of cricket that, that's to be played. So, okay. So, I mean, let's let's go with that. We've, we, well, I suppose we've started bottom up, but that's fine. Um, so we've gone with Bumra Siraj Dayal as the, the pace picks, um, Ashwin Jadeja, and then obviously Rishabh Bunt picks himself. Who are we going in the top five then? I think it's pretty self-explanatory, isn't it? It's Rohit Sharma and Jess yeah. Val at, at opening, Shubman Gill number three, mm-hmm. Virat Kohli number four, Sirfraz Khan number five, and and then you've got your 11, Panth, Jareja, Ashwin, uh, Bumra, Del, and Siraj. Okay. Uh, Karan? Kale? Uh, no, Sirfraz over Kale? Um, ideally neither. Um... <laughs> But again, okay. like <laughs> so who then? <laughs> like no, ideally neither. Um, well, again, you're putting like in Drew. You're putting in Drew Jarrell just as a batsman. What are you doing? Uh, I do love Drew so much. Uh, I love Shuby. There's a couple of players, but and I, I mean, Sir Khan is the obvious pick. I, I mean, I think it's a no-brainer selection. This is just me sort of playing devil's advocate. Like I've mentioned, as a fat boy myself, I get hidden in the field when I play. In my Again, world. I've explained, and we said this. And also, look at his dad. Right? It's it's just the way their frame is. Like I'm slim. He yeah, did. But, t- he did take a couple of pretty good catches during that England series. Yeah, but I mean, he—if you don't put him in a catching position, he's toast. If the ball goes three feet by him, he, we're not—we're not chasing that ball from the back. Um, which again, I think there's also just some to an extent where fitness has to matter in professional sport. Um, and no, no, I don't want to watch Caleb play cricket for India in a Test match anymore. That's just sort of boring. Um, so yeah, this again, this is—you got to play Star Frost. I think it's a no-brainer. You got to, but. If I had a bone to pick with him, and as you mentioned, big bone, so it's a big bone to pick, um, right. it would just be his fitness. But he's, <laughs> he's a, he's a <laughs> uh, What you might not be able to see, uh, listeners, is that our streaming software appeared to be so offended uh, by Karen uh, fat-shaming Sir Faraz Khan that it cut him off mid-sentence. <laughs> I fat-shamed myself first. I led off with, I'm the big boy in my little Bush League, Dallas League, and I'm playing in the slips. God knows they're not going to put me on the boundary. Because that's just going to be, I'm just a walking boundary. So, um, yeah, that is my bone to pick. All in all, the thing that I'm most excited for in this entire series is Gautam strategy. How we approach everything. Are we going to be ill-mannered? Are we going to be on the front foot? Are we going to be feisty? Are we not? Um, and the dynamic well, between him and Virat. Well, I mean, they seem to be friendly enough now. Um, they, I think uh, when Virat first started his career, Gautam shared his match, uh, Man of the Match prize with Virat, if I'm not mistaken. It's just a memory that I have. Um, <laughs> we will get that checked by by the stats people, like probably myself. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but I'm pretty sure that happened. Um, so look, Gautam Gambir, of course, the second um, IPL management person to go to an international role, the other being Ashish Nero, who became the Prime Minister of the UK. Uh, I would say that uh, <laughs> um, I think Gotti's obviously it's his first first match. He's going to be up for it and he's going to be on it. Um, we were giving him a lot of stick last week and I, I, I realised afterwards this guy um, funded a community kitchen for poor people in Delhi off his own back where they could buy a meal for one rupee and he said quite openly this is why i work in commentary and ipl so as much as we were cussing him for being a bit bristly and a bit of a bit of a hard ass um he has a soft center to him uh and, and, and a kind of empathetic sensitive side i would argue you don't just start up an enterprise on that size, size and scale if you don't have a bit of a heart so maybe he'll be okay with uh arm around um the boys, but if we if, if the boys need an arm around after the first test against Bangladesh, we've got huge issues, like really, really big issues. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm also it. interested just in in the rest of the coaching setup. Morley Morkel is now India's fast bowling coach, which I'm interested to see. He's a bowler I have a huge amount of time for. Uh, I, I loved his evolution as a fast bowler over the years. I I found that I found the fact that he was able to be you know, himself and be a little bit vulnerable at times and be and not necessarily posture 
too much and still be a really aggressive, <coughs> frightening fast bowler when he got things right. Uh, and who adapted really well to bowling just that little bit fuller uh, over time. Um, also, by the way, the hardest handshake that I have ever received. Uh, <laughs> I shook his shook his hand uh, when he was playing for Surrey uh, a few years ago. Met him at the Oval, and my hand took like a day to recover. Uh, a um, but yeah, I'm excited to see how he uh, works with this group of fast bowlers. He said that he said in the interview that. This setup runs itself with the th- with the three main fast bowlers, but how he brings through the likes of uh, the likes of uh, Arkash and Deep, the likes of Yash Dale, uh, and any number of these fast bowlers that you see coming through, uh, who are in their in their mid and early twenties now, or even uh, someone like an Ashdeep who's in the white ball setup but not um, in the red ball setup, yeah, or Umran Malik, or, yeah. or or guys like this. Um, if any of these, if any of the guys who've done well at successive under nineteen World Cups uh, come through and do well, Mohsin Khan uh, would be another one that I would look out for uh, to see how to see how that transition gets gets managed. And uh, I have a lot of time for Morning Morkel, uh, so I think uh, he he goes with my blessing. Was he not part of the Pakistan setup at one point? He was. He was he was part of the Pakistan setup briefly when Matthew Hayden was in charge. Yeah, so he's he's in a, kind a of lot of people have come through that. A lot of people have come in and out of Pakistan cricket over the last few years. Yes, uh, he's in a reverse Gary Kirsten, um, who has kind of ended up there. Uh, Bichada, um, Morning Morkel, of course, <laughs> he's friends with one of my favourite England players of all time, KP, who's also a big uh, friend of of India. Um, you touched on the fact that Morning was kind of a. Uh, a bowler who would just bowl and not get involved in, in kind of drama, shall we say. Um, someone that I was always didn't like facing, not that, not, not myself, obviously, but watching like you know, my batsman facing. Um, is is there some? Is there are, are there any of the players or any of the bowlers that you think are particularly like him or have like certain skills that are similar to his that maybe could benefit the most from him? I mean, alarming bounce from a length. Mohammed Shami springs to mind. Obviously, mm. Morning Morkel's, what, seven, eight inches taller than Mohamed Shami. <laughs> yeah. um, that's not mean big, that's not hyperbole, by the way. That's actually, I think, true. Um, He's massive, yeah. Uh, but, so, uh, recreating someone with his, with his physical gifts is, is tricky, but Mohamed Shami has had a, <laughs> did have a period where he was bowling all of those tours, particularly in England, where he would bowl unbelievable wicket, wicketless spells, and the suspicion was that he was always bowling that fraction too short, and therefore the ball was missing the edge, missing the edge, missing the edge. Um, and I think con- continuing the work that Bharat Aran did with Mohammad Shami uh, would be a big priority for Morning Morkel. Um, and channeling the instincts of guys like Siraj um, uh, as well. I-, I think that the... I think if you can't learn from someone like Morning Morkel, you're not doing your job properly, frankly. Yeah, that's that's fair. Um, I'm just going to quickly rewind a little bit. Um, in 2009, it was uh, a, a one-day match. Kohli scored a century. Um, Gumbia and Kohli had a uh, what was it 224 run partnership as they were chasing 316 um, against Sri Lanka. So Kohli was out for 107. Gambir got 150 and, and, and basically took India home. Gambir was given the man of the match and he said no and he called up Kohli and uh, gave it to him. So that happened. I didn't just stream it. Um, right, anyway, back to the bowlers. <laughs> I did a bit of quick fact-checking of myself on my own. Hashtag ranting. good guy got them. Good guy, yes, that's a great hashtag. Good guy got them. Yes. That is good. That is good. Um, right. Okay, so Mourne Morkel is going to make India's fast bowlers even more super fantastic and fast and amazing. Um, batting wise, what would you think of the batting coaching staff? Um, what would you think? Which kind of kinks do you think they can iron out from the, from the batters? I think the interesting thing is, will there be a an increased range of stroke? against the against spin we have been mm. starting to see a little bit of 
an increase in how much Indian batters are willing to sweep spinners. We've seen even Virat Kohli has started sweeping a little bit, which is not something that he has ever really done throughout his career. That was something that was missing from India. Like everyone else seems to sweep, but India just didn't kind of sweep. But yes, they yeah. do, do risky stuff, but it's something yeah, they needed to do. It wasn't learn. really a, sh- a shot that a lot of these guys were... It wasn't in the the classic Indian way of playing spin. It was actually something that a lot of other nations, uh, commentators and some coaches would say, look at the Indian guys, they don't sweep, you don't need to sweep. Um, if you're playing on a pitch where side spin rather than bounce is an issue... Uh, sweeping can be quite important to throw a to throw a, a bowler off their length. And if you look at the team now, Rohit Sharma is a very good sweeper and a reverse sweeper. Yashasvi Jaiswal sweeps and reverse sweeps. Kohli started doing it a bit. Safraz Khan and we know Rishabh Pant uh, are are pretty good at it as well. So actually, it'll be really interesting to see how how that gets used against someone like uh, Shakib Al Hassan, who doesn't get a lot of uh, bounce. He's going to skid the ball on, uh, and isn't necessarily a guy you want to be coming down the track to because he's got those white ball skills as well to be able to uh, to mess up your your rhythm there. I mean, you know, we will see, still see Rohit and Rishabh come punt dumb down the track because it's something they do really well, <laughs> uh, yeah. and and Jesswell as well, a brilliant straight hitter. Um, but I think that those w- will. That the thing I would be watching most most closely is scoring behind the wicket against spin. Okay, that's good. Yeah, no, that's a much more intelligent and tactical, and um, probably well manicured answer than mine. Uh, what I hope to get is it's just like basics and technique and the mentals because the team the batters know how to play against spin. They know how to bat against home conditions. We're in a slump. I think I don't know if it's a it's a situation of trying to do too much, but I think there has been just for whatever it's worth, fucking basketball has sort of left a little lasting impression in teams that like oh we can score quickly, make this entertaining, and we play the IPL, we play all these white ball um, matches and series and leagues and whatever that we can be more aggressive. We're capable of that, but I hope out of this series and out of this new coaching staff that. They get a little bit back to the basics. They focus on their techniques, and they keep their um, what's it called composure about them, and don't get out loosely. Because I mean, a lot of the wickets, like Vera, was, his head would slip over, wouldn't be in the same line with the ball and stuff like that. His bat, his leg pad would be out of line, and just stuff that is not synonymous with what he does, and not who he used to be. So if they can, if this team can, if this coaching staff can just reel the team back and be like, we know you're great, we know you're spectacular, the best home batting team, we don't lose at home, great spin batters. Don't forget who you are, and then don't forget what got you here. Um, there is an extent of learning the intent and sweeping and all that stuff, and I'm glad Virat added that to his arsenal, but he's doing just fine without it. Um, and so um, I would like it, us to see it sort of drop back and stick to our roots uh, slightly out of this staff. That being said, if everyone marches down the pitch and we're just abrasively in their face, that'd be fucking awesome to watch too. Well, hopefully Yashasvi Jesfal does his uh, his 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 Ustad G Ben Duckett proud um, in in this this new in his return, shall we say? Um, Speaking of uh, batting coaches turning up elsewhere, Vikram Rathor, who was uh, the batting coach for India for for quite a long time, quite recently under Rahul Dravid, uh, is in New Zealand's coaching staff now. Wow. Well, it makes sense if they got a tour to India. Why not get an Indian batting coach? Yeah. I think it was just for the Afghanistan Test match. The Test match that got entirely rained out in Noida, uh, but uh, he's been he's been working with them a little bit. Wow, I've, I'm I'm really Afghanistan is another conversation another day. I feel quite sad about what's going on there. Um, I think that, that for most Indians, they would be Indians' uh, sep- second team, um, and it's quite sad to see their decline for for not for sporting reasons. Um, right, guys. Um, can we just round off with? Uh, I think we're yeah. I think we've, we've kind of um, we're near the end. So should we just round off with a couple of things you'd like to see um, from this this the first game? I mean, I'll I'll start. I would find it hilarious if a Bangladesh batsman gets timed out personally, 
but you guys can give serious answers uh, or, or more cricketing answers, shall we say. Knuckle, you first. I'm struggling to imagine Rohit Sharma timing someone out. Although the oh, look on his the look on his face when he did it would be very entertaining. There's absolutely you know. Look, I, what I want to see. Uh, look, I I am not an India partisan as much of a lot of guys on the podcast. I, I am in it for the drama and I am in it for some top quality cricket. But every single fiber of my being wants a Rishabh Pant comeback hundred. Okay. It would make me happy to to my mitochondria to see that happen. That's that's deep. That's deep. Um, uh, Kurt? Well, a partisan answer seemed slightly targeted. Um, yeah, maybe I want to see a Bangladesh thrilling win. Um, no, fuck that. I want to see an ushering <laughs> double century and an innings win by India. I don't give a shit. Uh, I want to blow them out. Uh, a Virat century... Uh, gout them to take his shirt off and wave it in the air. Um, yeah, so that's I want excitement. I want us to dominate. I don't. And the matches start at 11 p.m. for me, so it just could not be at a worse time uh, for these matches to start. So if we could just make light work of them, sort of do to them what they did to Pakistan, um, and so I can go to sleep at a fairly reasonable time and wake up happy and refreshed, uh, that would be. That would be uh, ideal. But yeah, my bold take is I think Ashwin scores a century. I think it's going to be something magical, bring the country to tears and bring the fans to their feet. Um, that, would, that would, I think, make me the happiest. Yeah, this for you is um, what Australia is for us. So, well, yeah, I, I get I get that feeling. Right. Um, look, Gotti marching onto the, uh, the, the pitch after the game, topless and wearing a lungi would be quite hilarious. Um, just, just in keeping with local tradition, I think I think we'd all take that. Um, well, I wasn't does, expecting does the, politi- to- does the political party he represent allow him to wear a lungi in public? I don't know if he's still. I don't think he's MP anymore because he has to be the coach, right? Uh, so I don't, I don't think you can no. have both jobs. Uh, just yeah, I, I, no, just, I, get, I, I get I'd be I would be interested in the in the regional significance of uh, uh, of that. Yeah, that party is not so popular in, in Tamil Nadu. Uh, that's that's for sure. Uh, I, th- I think they've got they've got a guy called Anamalai down there. He does wear lungis, so I think it might be okay. Um, also, by the way, there were rumours going round, which I may have just started. Um, the winner of this series does not get to keep Sheikh Hasina, so don't worry about that. Um, so it, that's that, I think, for this episode, um, previewing the first test of the Snake Charmers versus the Snake Dancers. Um Let's see whether it's Nagin Dance or Nagin <laughs> Goodbye. Um, I, I know what's doing it, so there we are. Um, big shout to our mate Mark uh, Machado for sending us pictures of Varapals just before this uh, podcast started, um, which I think is in, entirely in keeping, actually, with everything. Um, if you... Uh, well, sorry, let me start again, because I've just swallowed my words uh, like that proverbial... Uh, do do remember to subscribe to this podcast right here on YouTube and the podcast app that you are checking us out on. Make sure you tell a friend, otherwise a whole bus people of, full of people will laugh at you. And uh, go and follow us on Instagram, X and Facebook. Just search Kumble Corner, uh, both of them with a K, obviously. Until next time. Bye. <laughs>